We stand on the shoulders of giants. It's important for our students to understand that. When I'm presenting Howard University to a student athlete, these are the things we talk about. The basketball part is important and it's a big part of it. But I want young men to understand that. I want them to have a broader experience than just on the basketball court. Hey, John. Yes, sir. Every day I've been here at Howard University, I've grown more as a basketball player and more as a man. We've got a lot of great people here from the Howard community, the GC community, from Congress, from the White House. We have our staff here at Mamatoto Village, so let's be fully engaged and present with everyone that's come to serve with us, okay? Yes, sir. So right now we are at Mamatoto Village. It's so an on-the-ground organization in D.C. that works with black mothers specifically to try and combat some of the issues that we have in the city with black maternal health. In D.C., black women are four times more likely to die than the national uh, average during uh, pregnancy or in postpartum. So in high school and college for me, that was when I kind of got involved with social issues. And Coach Blakeney, as he was recruiting me here for my last year of basketball, he knew that about me. Part of his recruitment was like, we, we really welcome that and like, try and get the most out of our students and our athletes in terms of service. Like there's been a lot of activists and politicians and people who have made impacts on the world that have come from Howard University. And so a lot of times we organize around like, you know, voting rights and things like that. But um, I think this is just in line with, you know, the ideals of the university. Standing at five foot five, a strong five foot five from <laughs> Bowie, Maryland. We got Mariah. Yeah. And we got Naomi. Hey. Okay. All right. So firstly, I would love to thank Mama Toto Village for having us. We really appreciate the partnership and allowing us to do our social justice advocacy here with you guys. Howard was founded on social activism and service in the community. I was so thrilled and excited when I heard that we were advocating for black maternal health. Uh, it scared me a little bit because honestly, as a 51-year-old black male, I had never known much information, if any, on this topic. I'm really proud that they've chosen such a powerful cause to advocate on and to lend our voice. So we're excited to be here. We're awfully grateful. And uh, hopefully we'll make you guys proud and do our best in, in advocating for this cause. Big guys, you're going to follow Kennedy to the back. Kind of big. So, no, all y'all are big. Jordan, you look great. You're not sneaking off nowhere, seven foot monster. You're good. So, they are wrapping diapers, they are packing diaper bags, they are actually helping to um, get this space that we are sitting in organized because we're going to renovate it very soon. Newborn stuff is in the zero to three. They're sorting baby clothes and packing teas that we're gonna give to mamas and families. They are putting together postpartum kits, lactation kits, hygiene kits, things that are really gonna affect and impact the moms today. Um, and then just past this, they have been able to speak about black maternal health, which is so important because it's important to have black men on the front lines as well. It personally matters to me because my mom had me when she was 18 and I know, you know the struggles that could come from you know, being a young black mother especially. And I just feel like we have to do our part to support the other young black mothers in need as well. I think it's important to show up and show the people that you're really about something. I mean, because anybody can say anything, but to come here, be physical, actually know what you're taking a part of and seeing it hands-on, I just feel like it hits differently. I came into Mama Toto a little over three years now. I was pregnant with one of my daughters. And I came back maybe two and a half years to work because I love what they did for me and I wanted to give back to the community. You know, we just put our all into it. Sometimes I get emotional because <laughs> it makes me excited, you know, that we are able to do that. You know, I didn't have those things, you know, what through my life. So now I'm able to give what I wanted. <laughs> As a young black woman, I don't really think about like black maternal health as much as I probably could be. 
by them choosing this, it really made me like switch gears into like, what does this mean for me? And like, just the people I'm surrounded by on campus. And I think that just gave me a new perspective on like who they are as people. Just cause I saw them so much in a basketball space that I was like, oh, they just play basketball and go home. Like, do they even have friends outside of the team? <laughs> and now like they're choosing a whole initiative surrounded by people that on the surface level have nothing to do with them. Are you ready for more diapers to stack? Ready for a good day of service. Maternal health in this country has a, a long standing history that uh, especially for black women starts with enslavement. However, it was on the plantation, it was in the resistance that Black women had in choosing not to have babies, right? Making that decision to say, no, you will not enslave me or my children. The history of gynecology in this country, right, was actually founded by experimenting on the bodies of Black women um, who were experimented on without medication, right? So the things that we do even today in modern medicine were because of Black women's bodies. And so we understand that maternal health and reproductive justice, right, is everyone's problem. For me, I wanted to think about something that was outside of ourselves. A lot of times when you think about social justice and like community service, things of that nature, like a lot of people try and think like, what can I do to help you know, myself, people that look like me. At a school like Howard, where you know 70% of uh, our student body is women, we kind of wanted to highlight part of the issue that isn't you know, talked about enough. Okay, there we go. Yeah, two, 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 three, three, four, two, five. I'm the oldest of three uh, young men. My mom uh, is a single mother. She actually had some complications with my youngest brother. And she like almost like started crying when I told her about, you know, what we were thinking about doing. All right, we got your first package. If I think about my own experiences as a mom, having strong maternal care helped me mentally to just be okay, you know? As a mom, when you're carrying a child, you worry about all the things, about how your decisions are impacting, you know, this little baby who's being formed. You're looking at the world, you're nervous about bringing a life into the world, but you wanna set them up in the best way possible. And so it's super, super important. My mom had a difficult, a difficult pregnancy with me. I stayed in the hospital, I was in the NICU when I, when I was born. And then watching my mom with my younger sister, like she had doctors that didn't believe her. So it, it made me scared for myself. Like if I had stayed in Texas and given birth there like she did, what would that look like for me? The biggest thing I would say is whether or not I would survive the, the childbirth itself or would I be able to go to a hospital without facing any discrimination or would my doctors believe me if I said I'm in pain, like things like that. I definitely don't plan on having children anytime soon, but I do know if I'm here, then they're who I'll go to. All right, we're done with the first group. After this, you're done. And we thank you for your service. To see these young black men here in this space who chose to focus on an issue that is so critical to be at the forefront of everyone's conversation. You know, it's, it is deeply moving to have them here and to walk alongside us as comrades. We don't need saviors, we don't need protectors, but we need comrades, we need allies, we need partners in this faith. Ain't you, you know. Women's rights are everybody's rights. I think the, the, the deaf tone to our country with, uh, in regards to women's rights and women's issues, it's, uh, it's really disturbing. You know, I have a wife and I have two daughters. So I'm surrounded by women, I have a sister and a mom. So to know that there's not advocates that are out there fighting and pushing for their rights and uh, in their best interests is, uh, you know, that's why I'm so happy that we're able to lend a voice and to amplify women's rights in this day today and actually even further on. I was very excited and slightly surprised because typically you don't hear men speaking up about these issues and I knew that coming from them, it would give us a bigger platform than if it was just coming from me or any other black women here. And they're actually very passionate about it. What have you learned from this experience? Just how special a place Howard is and just how many alumni there are and how involved they are with our program and the school in general. I think I learned just how much bigger than basketball or any kind of sport it is when you're a Howard athlete. Like the wide scope that we have and the things that you could learn and experience here is much bigger than going to any other school. I love the variety of, of answers I'm getting from this. You guys are really putting thought into it. Shout out you guys. That's awesome. What makes coming to Howard special is just the camaraderie, the bond, the family I've, I've you know, been welcomed into here. You know, I didn't really come here just because 
um, it's an HBCU or just because I wanted to play basketball. I wanted to come here for its education and to be accepted into the Howard family. And I feel like these bonds will last, you know, forever, like way farther than just the court. Well, we stand on the shoulders of giants and it's important for our students to understand that. And when I'm presenting Howard University to a student athlete, these are the things we talk about. The basketball part is important and it's a big part of it. But I want young men to understand that. I want them to have a broader experience than just on the basketball court. How can they grow as a person? How can they grow and prepare themselves for the next 40 to 50 years when they're done playing basketball? And all of these life lessons that we have, either through community service or when we're on the road traveling and we invite an alum back to our dinners or we have mentors come in and spend time with our players. Whatever those things are that we're giving back to our players are important to their overall academic experience. When I hired Coach Blakeney, I was looking for someone who was going to help our program win. But winning had a different meaning to me at Howard University. It wasn't just about X's and O's. It was about leading and nurturing young men. That's what I wanted for this team. Our basketball court is a classroom, and I look at myself as an educator and a teacher first and foremost. So if I'm not giving our student athletes an experience that's broader than just Georgia Avenue and things that they can take with them, uh, then I'm doing a disservice to our student athletes. The ball doesn't always bounce. You know, after basketball, you gotta be able to find something 